This is the 415ers podcast coming to you on the Odyssey Sports Podcast Network with 95.7 The Game. Please download, rate, subscribe on the Odyssey app. Also, of course, check us out wherever you get your podcasts from. That's Mark Grandy. I'm Evan Giddings. Okay, Mark, well, the, the last part of this, and we've kind of, you know, kind of gone through the schedule a little bit slowly, but it seems like each and every week there's a new factoid or a new piece of data that that arises that makes us look at it a little bit differently. And honestly, uh, the bold prediction I gave a couple weeks ago about the 49ers wrapping this thing up by about, a, I think it was two-thirds of the way through the season, uh, I, I would like to rescind that politely. And uh, I'll hand you the floor <laughs> as to why that might be the case. Uh, yeah, so I was just scrolling Twitter uh, late last night, and one of my favorite football follows, Warren Sharp. Uh, if you do not follow him, you can check him out on Twitter, at Sharp Football. Uh, you can also uh, check out his website, full of really, really great analysis and thoughts, uh, sharpfootballanalysis.com. Um, talking about the NFL schedule and breaking it down in every conceivable angle in every possible way. Um, and he came to the conclusion that the 49ers uh, are hurt really like no other team this year in terms of rest edge. The 49ers have the biggest rest disadvantage in the NFL this year. Um, the 49ers and I'll, I'll try my best to, to explain this. The 49ers schedule features an NFL worst negative 20 day net rest edge. You might ask yourself, okay, how does that work? Well, let's say, for example, the 49ers in week six, they're playing the Cleveland Browns. The Cleveland Browns are off of a bye week. The 49ers are playing in week five. So that means the 49ers played on Sunday while the Browns played the previous Sunday, and then they will both play the following Sunday. That is a negative seven-day rest edge for the 49ers or a seven-day rest disadvantage for the 49ers. It comes very similar with the Cincinnati Bengals in week eight. The 49ers, in fact, play on Monday night football in week seven. Then they play on Sunday against Cincinnati in week eight. So they have one less day than normal to prepare. But also, guess what? Cincinnati is off a of bye week. So that's an eight-day disadvantage for the 49ers. Similar story, uh, week 15, Arizona is off a of bye. Uh, week 14, Seattle is coming off of a Thursday night game. The 49ers are not, so Seattle off of a mini bye. That's a you know a three day rest disadvantage. I could keep going on and give you all of the numbers, but the takeaway here, Evan, is as a whole this season, the 49ers have 20 fewer rest days or days to prepare for games, days between games than their opponents every single week. And that is really tough and it is really difficult. And you consider where they come in at parts of the schedule, who they come against, a really tough game against Cincinnati, a late season division matchup against Seattle, your division rival, the team that you expect to be fighting with atop your division. Those are really tough situations for the 49ers. It's not something they can't overcome, but it's just unfortunate the schedule was so lopsided against the 49ers in this regard. I, I guess my next question would be, do you think that the rest of the top teams in the NFL, or at least that, that finish kind of in the final four, are also facing similar rest disadvantages? Obviously not at the same level as the 49ers, um, but I, I do wonder if you know Warren Sharp has also looked at, say, the Philadelphia Eagles and what they're facing. Yeah, so he has broken it down for every single team. And you look at the numbers, he broke it down in a, in a couple of different ways. Total rest days, you know, disadvantage or advantage or whatever. But also how many times you are playing a game with a disadvantage. Like, for example, the Kansas City Chiefs have six games with which they are at the rest disadvantage. The 49ers only have five, uh, but, you know, net Kansas City, negative 13-day net rest edge, 13-day rest disadvantage. The 49ers rest disadvantage game just happen to be, you know, greater. Each individual game is worth more days than Kansas City's. But looking at the numbers, Generally, it seems like the better teams are at more of a disadvantage. Uh, just, again, looking at pure net rest edge from Warren Sharp. 49ers are last 
negative 20. Kansas City's at the very bottom, negative 13. You asked about Philadelphia. They're in the bottom third at negative six days. They're tied with the Chargers, uh, just one spot ahead of the New York Giants, who, of course, were a playoff team as well. Um, so it's not like all of the 49ers, I don't know, main competitors in the NFC are on the opposite side of this chart. Uh, but San Francisco is indeed at the very bottom, which is unfortunate. Uh, the 49ers were, they benefited from this. They had a very slight rest edge ac across their entire season last year. Uh, but the table has turned there at the, the very bottom of this list. But yeah, I mean, that does affect the way that I look at their schedule and the way that I look at a lot of these games. I know it's, you know, six months out, but when you're trying to handicap these things, um, it, it does look like the 49ers in that 11 and a half win total might be more towards what, what you said, Mark, which is barely under uh, as opposed to potentially over. So now we can confirm it. We, we can definitively say the NFL did screw the 49ers <laughs> <laughs> with their schedule this year. Yeah, that's what we were looking for. I just wanted you to get that out there. Um, one other thing, I or actually a couple other things. Um, the 49ers buy as well. And this is something I noticed when looking at the schedule, but I, I didn't bring it up when we first broke it down. The 49ers week nine buy, uh, as Warren Sharp puts it, is negated because Jacksonville is also off a of buy. So you're you're off a of buy. You're, you're feeling better about yourselves as well, but you don't have that big advantage right out of the buy because the team you're playing is also coming out of the buy. Now, I think that's, Fair, you have a buy, you should play the team that's that's coming off of a buy. But considering the 49ers uh three other times play teams off of buys when they're not off buys themselves, that is a little bit unfortunate. But there are two games in which the 49ers have the rest advantage against their opponents. Um, and one of them at least is a really big game. It's week 13 against Philadelphia, uh, because the 49ers are coming off of a Thursday night game against Seattle. They have that mini buy, and then they take on Philadelphia, who played on Sunday. So the 49ers have a three-day rest edge against Philadelphia in that game. I guess if you had to pick one where you had the rest advantage over your opponent, it might be that game. So at least the 49ers have that going for them. Uh, but still, all in all, when you just look at days to prep for games, it does feel like the 49ers drew the short end of the stick. Yeah, especially those those three bye weeks. I mean, that's probably the reason, even though you're seeing the Chiefs with and, and you know, potentially the Chargers, the Eagles with four or five games at a rest disadvantage, it's not that lopsided compared yeah. to the 49ers where you're you're giving up essentially six days, seven days of rest. Yeah, like like for example, Philadelphia has five games where they're at the rest disadvantage. Same number of games as the 49ers, mm -hmm. but three of those are just because they played on Monday night the previous week. So though each of those three games is only one day of disadvantage each time. So in their five games where they're at a disadvantage, it totals negative uh nine days. But in the five games where the 49ers are at a disadvantage that totals to negative 26 in just those five games now you you take back the two days the two games where they have advantages it it, it gets back down to negative 20 as a whole but you're right there are teams that has have an even amount or even more days uh more games number of games where they are at a disadvantage but the 49ers are just so extreme each and every time they're at that disadvantage that that it, it pushes their number up over the top, unfortunately. But it's just something that, I mean, you can't control the schedule. So we'll see how it does impact them. But something to keep an eye on because something that Kyle Shanahan says every year, coming off of a bye, coming off of a Thursday night game where they have an extra day off, it's just so nice in the middle of a grueling season to have some extra days off. Um, and it's few and far between, between where the 49ers have that this year. Well, <laughs> my next question would be, how come, Shanahan, you're one and four coming off of buys then? <laughs> nah, man, that's a good point. I don't know. Figure maybe it just, out. Maybe just got the fat cat syndrome. Who knows? <laughs> maybe three teams this year could potentially run into that against the 49ers. Maybe. We'll see. That'll wrap it up for this episode of the 415ers podcast. As always, coming to you on the Odyssey Sports Podcast Network, 95.7 The Game. That's Mark Grandy. I'm Evan Giddings. We'll be coming at you next week. Come at you twice a week here in the offseason every single week. Please download, rate, subscribe on the Odyssey app. Also, wherever you get your podcast from. We'll talk to you next time. Enjoy your weekend.